Well, thanks for staying from the earlier meeting and thanks to people who are online and welcome to this gospel service tonight and may the Lord bless us all for listening to the word of God being read and spoken therefrom. Let's turn to the gospel by Luke. Luke's gospel in the New Testament and chapter number 10. Luke number 10. Ten, a very familiar little section of God's Word. Luke chapter 10 and verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted Jesus, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How do you read? And he answered, said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbour as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, This do, and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbour? Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed him, and, uh, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him he passed by, on the other side. And likewise a certain Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wound, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou hast, thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Now, when all these three, with, which, of, which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbour unto him, that fell among thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him, then Jesus said unto him, Go, and do thou likewise. <coughs> Here's the very familiar passage of what we call the Good Samaritan. I think everybody has heard the phrase, a Good Samaritan. Do you know what a Good Samaritan means? It means someone that comes along and does a helpful task for you. And here's Jesus telling a story. Luke's Gospel is full of stories that Jesus told. And many of them are of everyday things. He told stories of every, every day. And no doubt this was a very familiar setting. This road from Jerusalem to Jericho was famous for being a very dangerous road. It was a downward lonely pathway uh, from Jerusalem to Jericho, from the place of privilege, which was Jerusalem, the great city of God, where uh, it was famous for all its worship and temples and such, and down to Jericho, which, which was almost like a bit of a, a cesspool of iniquity and, and sin in that place. Um, and here he was travelling down that road. And there were many bandits on the way, and they were lurking about, ready to get a traveller and overtake them and steal their money from them. And every day happening it would seem to be. But Jesus uses it as an, an illustration of who is my neighbour, as the, the lawyer was asking him. So I just wanted to pick up one or two thoughts from this little section 
for, a, for a, a few minutes. I want to look at three points. First of all, I want to look at the condition of the man that was overtaken by the robbers on the way. And I want to then look at the compassion of the Samaritan, the good Samaritan that came alongside. And then the third point was the care of the host. He gave him some money and said, look after him. And when I come back again, whatever more you, you use and, 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 uh, and costs, I'll repay it when I come again. Or I want to look at it another way. It's like the journey of life. We're all, all on a journey. We're all travelling a long life's journey. It's from birth through to death. And we have many experiences as we pass along the way on the journey of life. And very often our life's journey is attacked by evil. For we are all sinners by nature and most of us to some degree are sinners by practice as well. And I just want you to think about the whole scenario here and think about the brevity of time. We never know when that attack is going to overtake us like what happened to the man here by the, by the robbers and there was a brevity of time involved here. So we consider these things together for a few minutes and just apply them to each one of us um, whether we are in the building here in the hall or whether you are online if you just want to stop and think and apply that to yourself. You are on a journey of life. Where are you along that journey? Young, middle-aged or elderly? Whoever we are we need to think about where we are and our relationship to God within that journey of life. We need to think that life is brief. It uh, could be short, it could be long. But even if it is long, it's brief. As we look back, for there were 80 or 90, and we say, where is the time gone? Life is brief at the best. And sadly for some people, it's extremely brief. And they get taken away in life when they're so very young. So there's a brevity attached to life. And here's the Lord Jesus, and he's using all these examples, and we could bring many out of them as he did, and just think of ourselves as we journey here along the journey of life. The thing is that all of us, as we're on this journey, we are attacked by evil, sin. It attacks us at our very birth. Because all of us are born and by nature as sinners. It's in our being. Our foreparents are way, way back. Many, many decades of years ago, Adam and Eve, they sinned in that garden. And on the, on the flow of life thereafter, all of us in the, on the line of Adam are sinners by nature. We don't teach to be bad. We're inherently bad. We don't teach to be obstructive against the things of God. We are naturally against God and our own beings. And yet God is appealing to us because he loves us. And while we are sinners and he hates our sin, he loves the person. He loves you and me. All of us are loved of God. And it is shown by the giving of his son. The Bible teaches us so often that the evidence of God's love is shown in the giving of his beloved son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We were at a distance from God. And God wanted us to be near to him. But the problem of sin 
was the barrier. This had to be dealt with. And how could a holy God deal with sinful people and bring them together without some kind of action? And we just think again of that, than the gift of God through Jesus Christ. Very well-known verse in the scriptures is John chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only well-beloved Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There's evidence that the Lord Jesus loves us. The Lord Jesus came to show God's love for all of us. And we can... Uh, be assured of the fact that God loves us and we just think of our condition and our sinful nature and yet God extends his love to us here is the man and he would maybe try different things not that he was able but there came a priest and there came a Levite there came these different uh, beings these different people that one would think would help them along the journey, but they were unable to help him. They just looked and passed by. And then came the Good Samaritan. And of course the Good Samaritan is like Jesus. That's why he's telling the story. He's telling the story about himself. And he is the one who came, and he came to where we were. Isn't it wonderful? The hymn says in the book that he came to where we were. Jesus, my Saviour, to Bethlehem came, born in a manger to sorrow and shame. Oh, it was wonderful. Blessed be his name coming for me, for me. What a wonderful thing that one of the Godhead took upon himself humanity it's beyond our understanding. And yet it's true. Took upon himself humanity. Born as a babe in Bethlehem's manger. Grew up as a boy. Went on as a man. And lived a holy, spotless, pure life. Even the demons... They could not point a finger at him. Whoever wanted the challenge could not point a finger. He was pure inward and outward. That holy man of God. And yet he had come to rescue you and me in our need and in our condition. He came down like the good Samaritan came to where the man was. He got down off his beast, his, his, his uh, donkey or his ass or whatever he was travelling on in the story that's here. And he got down to where the poor man was in all his need, in all his injuries because of the robbers that had dealt so bitterly with him. And he... he gave him some uh, kindness, he gave him compassion, he cleaned up his, his wounds, he poured an oil, the oil of compassion and love, and he bound them up and put, on, put them on his own, his own donkey and he took them to a place of safety and security. So the Lord Jesus came to where we were and where we are and he brought with him a message of love and compassion that God loved this world of sinners lost and that included people like you and me what a wonderful thing some people think that nobody cares for them and nobody loves them and that they are alone and have to struggle on and yet here is one in all his compassion and love and he wants to reach out to people like us. Whoever you are, whoever we are, 
and he wants to reach out and just come near to us. Forgive our sins. And he's able to do that because he's the one who went all the way to Calvary and gave himself on our account. He didn't need to go to Calvary. He didn't need to go to that cross for he had no sin. He was sinless, as I've already said. And he went there. Why? Because of you and me. He bore the punishment that should have been for us. He bore it on his own self on that cross at Calvary's feet. And then on that basis, a holy God can come out and pardon people like us. On that basis, not on the ability of us, but on the complete finished work of his own beloved son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's a verse that says that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. So God took the punishment through his own beloved son for people like you and me. How could we doubt that we are not loved, that we are not cared for? And here we are. And the very God of heaven came near to us in the person of his son, the Lord Jesus. Was it for me? For me alone? The Saviour left his glorious throne, the dazzling splendour of the sky. Was it for me he came to die? Yes, it was for me. O wondrous love that he should come for me. And so, dear friend, I just lay that foundation that you are loved of God. That God has given his very best. His beloved son. To come and rescue us in all our need. To lift us up. And all we need to do is seek his pardon. And ask for his forgiveness. We are unable. We are like this man that was injured by the wayside. But the Lord Jesus cared for him and healed him of his illness. And the Lord Jesus can give to us that forgiveness of sins through the very precious blood that he shed at the cross of Calvary. We can't do it of ourselves. We can't ask someone else because we're all in the same situation. We are all sinners. But the Lord Jesus is the one who can. Not the labour of my hand can fulfil thy law's demand. Could my, deep, my tears forever flow? All for sin cannot atone. Thou must save, and thou alone. And so I just appeal in my closing few minutes to the fact that you can... Just take that step of trust and faith. Nothing more for you to do, for it's all been done. But you need to come and trust and believe in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give yourself over to him and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved from that sin. And then you can go on and trust and serve him and so, so by some measure of love back. That's all he asks. He doesn't want us to pay or say many prayers or anything such. He wants us just to give ourselves to him and commit, and, and, and commit our ways and our, ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's only a step to Jesus. And you can take it now. Come in thy heart believing and, and just lowly bow, accepting him as your Lord and Saviour. Nothing in your hand you bring, simply to his cross you cling and look to him for salvation. 
The message of the gospel is simple in one way. And yet it's a message of commitment. Because you just don't accept him and then that you forget all about it. You become a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you wouldn't regret it. It would be the best day of your life when you trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour and your Lord. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved.